Hi everyone, this is Margarita with City Gal Papetry and I wanted to share these watercolor brush pens by Chocola that they were uh, generous enough to send to me to try out. And I'm gonna show you really quick on the back, you will see all of the 28 colors that come in the package. Um, you might wanna pause that if you wanna uh, read them all. <laughs> there are quite a few of them. And they come like this package really nicely. Um, I think this is fairly common for these types of markers. I have another set in a different brand that also come packaged similarly. And they include this watercolor pad. Uh, it's 15 sheets of 200 pound uh, paper. And they are a size 5.8 by 8.3 inches. So you have a good size to do some nice work on there. And yes, you can see there's quite a bit of markers. They also come with the watercolor brush that you can add water on the inside and use the water from the inside. One is a thin pointy brush and the other one is flat. Sorry, I don't have technical names for these things, but you get two watercolor brushes with your markers. Uh, I like to have these little booklets that I make using a card base and like cheap watercolor paper and I just practice using watercolor and um, make patterns and marks and things like that. So I'm going to show you how to make one using the papers that come in the watercolor pad. I do start off by grabbing a craft cardstock and cutting it down to the size that I want and I fold it in half. So it's basically a A2 size card base. And then I take a few sheets from the watercolor pad that was included in the marker set. I think I have like five pages all together. And I'm going to cut them down. So the paper on one side has some tooth to it. And on the other side is really smooth. It feels like really good weighted paper. It's very thick and heavy. Um, and I'm going to cut it down to fit inside of my card base since I'm making a little booklet. You'll see the length of my card base is eight and a half inches. So I'm gonna cut my paper slightly smaller. It's gonna be eight inches in length. I use my paper trimmer to cut that down. And then um, my width is going to be um, smaller than the card base and that is four and I'm sorry, five and a half inches. So I want to make my page smaller than that. And I'm going to cut it down to five and a quarter. I think at first I was going to do five inches, but then I decided that would be too small. So my no my pages are now five and a quarter by eight inches and they fit perfectly inside of the cover. Then I grab a Teflon bone folder and I am going to uh, crease all of my pages down the middle at four inches and fold them in half and then burnish them. So here I'm just creasing down Just marking my fold, folding it in half, and then pressing that down to make sure it's nicely folded. And I'm going to repeat that with all of my pages. Once I'm done with that, I grab some binder clips. I make sure my pages are really nicely even and put together. And I pinch both the top and the bottom. And I'm going to even out the, the opening side because when you fold your pages together, all of your pages are sticking out oddly um, from the center. They're not, it, it doesn't give you a nice flat side. And so I'm using a box cutter and a ruler to trim down the pieces of paper that are sticking out. This way it looks more like an actual book. I'm left-handed, so I do this kind of backwards from other tutorials you might see. And then I use a uh, pair of scissors just to kind of clean it up a little bit. Now I'm ready to uh, bind my papers in the card base. So I'm moving my 
binder clips from holding all of the papers to only holding half of the papers onto my card base or cover. And then I grab a paper piercer and I poke a hole down the middle of my papers all the way from the center of my folded papers to the outside of the card base cover. And then I move my piercer over to the left. I'm repeating that process. And then I'm gonna flip my book around and do the same thing on the other side. This is pretty basic uh, book binding. There are many tutorials out there that can show you more in depth how to get this done, but I think it's pretty simple. Then I have this book binding kit that I purchased from Amazon. I'll, put, I'll link it below. And I really like it. It has all the tools you need to do uh, some basic book binding and it even comes with some wax thread. So I grab that, some thread, I grab a needle, I thread my needle, and then I, I want about three times the length of my book. That's how much string you want to use, about three times the length of your book. That will normally give you the right amount that you need to thread it for your binding. I insert my needle through the center from the inside of the book, leaving some of the thread. When I pull it through, I pinch it with my thumb. I move down to one of the out outer holes I insert the needle from the outside of the spine of the book into the middle of the book, pull it through, go over to the next hole at the top, insert from the center of the book, it exits out the back of the spine, and then you insert it again from the spine through the middle hole into the middle uh, center of the book on the inside. I hope that makes sense. I feel like this is always a really hard thing to explain because there's so much going on, but visually, I think it's it's not that complicated. Um, I like to keep my string one on either side of the center thread. When I tie it, I just cut off some of the excess. I put my needle away right away so I don't lose it. And then I make a double knot with my string making sure it's nice and tight. And then I'm gonna cut off the excess. You could leave it longer if you wanted to attach like beads or anything like that, that that's, that's fine. And now I have a little book and it's all nicely bound. It's all together, my pages are not going anywhere. And I like to use this as a de-stressing tool. Um, I do like to grab my watercolors or watercolor markers to do some abstract paintings and doodles on there. Um, right now I'm just kind of pulling the cover back so that I have a nice flat surface to work on. And I'm gonna take my uh, watercolor brush, I fill it up with water, and then I grab a few colors that I want to play around with. I also grabbed this little uh, ceramic dish to use as a palette and a rag and a spritz bottle, which is filled with water. I'm adding some of the color from the marker onto the little dish and then I spritz it with some water and then with my watercolor brush, I'm gonna pick up some of that paint and then just start painting. And again, this is just a really good technique to de-stress or to practice, you know, using watercolors or, I mean, if this is what you want your project to be, then, you know, it's whatever you want it to be. So I'm just adding more color depending on how I want it to look. And then you can always add water by squeezing your brush and squeezing out some of the water that's in the barrel. Uh, once I'm done with that color, I clean my brush, I wipe down the paint that's on the dish, and then I add more color from a different marker, from a different color. And I repeat that. I'm gonna add a little bit of water, pick up the color that I want, and then build onto my paper. I make the shape that I want and then I just keep picking up some color from the dish and then adding it. It wasn't dark enough so I do um, 
add some more color onto my dish so that I can have a darker appearance. This paper is, I like the paper because you can see that it's nice and thick. It's not warping or folding or curling. It's holding the water and the color really well, which I like. Um, I mean, I don't really have a preference. I normally, as long as I'm saving some money, I'm fine with using any kind of paper to do watercoloring. But if you want to have something that's not going to buckle, it then the weight of the paper matters. Another abstract shape here. I have a circle, a sort of like a square, and now I'm making a rectangle. And my plan is to doodle over these shapes. I have a booklet that's really just that. It's just watercolor shapes and then um, and then I use a, another marker or pen or pencil to doodle over it. And I find that it's just a really nice exercise to kind of get your creativity going. It's a nice exercise to de-stress, like I said before, or to just practice certain things that you want to try out. And you, you would use these markers just the way you would use any other type of watercolor. Um, you know, you can add your water to your paper first and do like a wet on wet, or you could use your markers dry and then add some water later on. I do that a little later in the video. So here I'm grabbing a Black Ink Joy pen by Papermate. I'll link that below as well. I really love this pen. And I'm just doodling over my colored area. And I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just kind of doing, doing my thing, just <laughs> getting stuff onto the paper. I drew a flower there. Now I'm, I'm drawing some little upside down V shapes to give the appearance of grass. And then I'm going to just doodle another flower. And then at the bottom, I wanted to add some lettering. So I do uh, script the word spring. I'm not very good at lettering. Um, I've tried to do like brush lettering and I have a really hard time with it, um, m mostly because I'm left-handed and I don't know, I tend to have a really hard time. So I'm going to do a faux calligraphy here. So I'm just adding a thicker line on all of the downstrokes of my letters. What would be the downstroke when you write the word? I just thicken that up so that it looks more like a brush lettering technique how I cheat because I can't do it the other way <laughs> or I could try but it never comes out the pretty uh, lettering that I would like it to be but this I can do I think anyone can do this it's not it's not uh, it's not too difficult so I would definitely recommend if you want to try some lettering and you're having a hard time to try this technique, this little cheat. I do one more page on film. Um, and since I already wrote spring on here, mostly because I didn't know what else to write on there, I decided to just do another season. So I'm gonna continue with the sort of nature type of theme here. So I draw a little stem and I'm drawing some leaves. I start with a th uh, nice thin line. I press down my marker to get a thicker line. And then as I lift my marker again, I get another thin mark. And that gives me the shape of these leaves. I still need to practice quite a bit to get my, my leaves just right. I'm adding a few more stems, just some more leaves. And at this point, I have no idea where I'm going with this, so I'm just winging it. <laughs> I don't know if I want some flowers. I don't know if I want more grass. I don't know what I want, but I'm just going with it. So I grab all the colors again. I grab a different color, and now I decided to add some sort of like vines around the paper and then some grass at the bottom. So you can see the, the color comes out straight from the marker quite well on the paper as well. Like if you wanted to just 
do some lettering techniques or just some coloring on paper, you can do that as well, just fine with the markers. Um, they don't write like regular markers because the brush tip is so soft. It's not, it's not uh, stiff like a regular marker. It's soft like a brush, like a paintbrush. So if you, you know, if you want to try out something like this, this is a good choice. I will be including uh, below in the description box a coupon code that was provided for my viewers. So if you decide you want to give these markers a try, um, you can use the discount code. I think you will uh, get a 10% discount uh, if you use the code. And I will include that both on the screen right here and then below in the description box. I'm adding a little bit of water now, just clean water. And I'm going to just pass that on to the strokes and the leaves and the stems. And it's going to give it a softer look. So you'll still have like the harder, harsher lines from the marker itself. But once you add water, it'll soften up the look that you have drawn on your paper. It's not going to spread out immediately like regular watercolor paints would do. Um, it will retain the marks that you have put on the paper with the actual marker, with the ink. So, you know, it depends on what type of look or technique or piece you're trying to, to you know, end up with. Since I started with a uh, season, um, and then this one's also going to be a season. The first page was spring. This one I label summer. Um, I think for the next few pages, I'll just continue with the winter and fall and probably just a few more like nature things. I, I would love to practice painting some birds. And then I take this blue, I fade it out quite a bit with water and I just want to add this sort of loose sky to my little drawing. So I'm wetting the paper quite a bit and it's still not warping or even curling or anything. It has remained nice and flat. It's not bleeding through either. So I have um, two, two paintings on this one page, one on the back side, which is the first one that I did, and this one, and there's no bleed through at all. I'm adding some more blue to my little dish just to make my little sky appearance. And then I start to darken it up by just adding some little spots here and there of a different color, a darker blue. I dry it between layers just so that um, I'm not continuously adding just on the wet uh, paper. And then I grab my black pen again and I'm gonna doodle over the leaves and the stems. So I feel like it's pretty much complete. I grabbed the black brush marker and I'm gonna frame my picture once more. I, I like to have that sort of frame around my um, drawing because it just makes it look more finished to me. Uh, and then I do clean it up and I color in the top and the bottom. And I think this one kind of ends up looking like a Polaroid picture or you know like a little um, Instax photograph except it's got a black frame instead of white and so yeah I'm just I'm just cleaning it up I'm gonna color it in I spare you from this boring part here so we'll just skip ahead and then I grab a white colored pencil and I'm gonna write the word summer at the bottom. Now my pencil was not light enough. I didn't like that the white was not contrasted sufficiently. So I do come back, I grab this Posca white paint marker. Um, I shake it up and then I add, I write over or trace over the letters that I already have there just to give it a, a more contrasted look. And that completes that one. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you're willing to give these markers a try. I, I enjoy playing around with them. I will probably use them in other projects as well. Um, again, please see the link below for the coupon code. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.